Jake Davis has, who's the um, trust data manager for uh, David Ross Education Trust. Um, I think that's really all the introduction, Dave, that you need. So with that, I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks ever so much, Sarah. Uh, and and th thanks everyone for inviting us to this today and, 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 um, and also for the opportunity to speak. I'll just wait for my presentation to come up. Now, if someone can let me know if, if they can see that okay. I am not seeing it yet. Ah, there we go. That's yeah. That's yeah. We're good to Lovely. go. That's Lovely. it. So, so yeah. Th th thanks again for the opportunity to speak today. Um, so I, I think kind of what what I really wanted to talk about was was more how important an MIS system is and how important it can be uh, to helping children's education and, and that entire community of a school. I, th I think there's often a big focus on children. But what about the parents? What about governors? What about employees? What about uh, our custom, uh, our business relationships, etc.? So th there's a huge scope there within the school community or stakeholders, if you will, um, and how we can bring all of those together for the betterment of a child's education. So I, for my job, I have a running theme or an ethos that whatever I do must come back to ideally helping a child's education. If it's not doing that, um, then our oh, DAFTA query, does it need to happen? So a little bit of background for those of you that, that, that aren't aware of Dave Ross Education Trust or DRET. Um, we have 22 primaries, 10 secondaries and all through and a special school. So we've got a wide uh, variety of schools within the trust stemming from teeny tiny or all, all the way up to a good size, shall we say. Um, Within the trust, though, we have a very high uh, proportion uh, of deprivation around a lot of the schools. Um, one in three of our children are pupil premium, with uh, one school having as high as 60% pupil premium. So that's a real good uh, narrative of, of those communities. And also free school meals, whilst we have seen a, a bump in free school meals through this pandemic, like I'm sure most of the other trusts or schools have, um, we are up to just over one in four students um, are on free school meals or eligible for free school meals at, at the moment. But importantly, the trust um, has a strong community focus or about creating those community driven citizens, those people of the future, um, really driving for good partnerships, culture and commitments to our communities over time, all to share our own objectives and aspirations basically do the best we can for the kids i think simply put okay so a, a, a little bit uh, a, a bit like derek on this one here i think it's useful to know a little bit of history um maybe about myself um i don't have a huge data background my degree was in film and tv and i ended up getting a job in a school um just after my daughter was born um 13 years ago so I started in education there kind of at the bottom as, as an admin assistant and, and have worked my way through. Um, an interesting part of this journey, though, Broncom has been part of that for, for a long, long time. I think a uh, Broncom employee I've known the longest is one of the trainers, Chad, who I've known for over 10 years now, actually. So back in 2011, in um, my first job, uh, we were school, we brought in the Broncom attendance module. On its own to start with ahead of in 2012 move into what was called then Broncom Galaxy uh, the attendance rollout went out really positively I shared an office actually with uh, with the attendance officer at the time and it's really successful and we moved away from CMIS at the time to Broncom shortly after that um, I moved to the Greater Nottinghamshire Education Trust and it took a little bit of convincing for them to move away from the legacy of sims but eventually um, i got my own way we went through a very good solid strong tender process and eventually moved to a bronco one-stop shop for both the primary and secondary in, in 2018 it was a, a really um, successful migration for the secondary uh, very straightforward i'm not going to bore you with that because i 
felt Derek covered that really well in terms of migration. Um, the migration away from a primary was from a primary MIS called Scholar Pack, um, and that, that was much more complicated. Um, and that was simply because Scholar Pack as a solution had no export routines at all. So that was back to doing things through lots of spreadsheets. Broncom support through that process of me pulling out my hair was, was exemplary. Uh, it, it really, really was, uh, to be fair, during very difficult times. And I know since then, um, they've improved their models uh, to come from companies like Scholar Pack across. So I think that's um, a good snippet to be aware of and know about. Um, all the way up to January last year, just before the world went wrong, I stepped into my current role as data manager uh, for David Ross Education Trust. Now, the trust itself um, moved all 34 schools over to Broncom in the autumn of 2018. Um, completely coincidentally, the same time I moved uh, across in my previous job as well. And, and, and I think it's fair to say from feedback I've had from people, there was a bit of uh, the good, the bad and the ugly at the time. Um, but importantly, whenever things go wrong for me, it doesn't the mistakes or things not working quite right doesn't phase me too much. It's how it's dealt with. And I, I certainly know that Broncom really helped make sure we, we got there. And since I've joined the trust, um, we've worked incredibly hard uh, with, with that relationship as well to make sure that is OK. And it's just, again, that, that reminder that whether it's personal life, or business or work or whatever it is, these journeys um, can be turbulent just as they would be with your partner or your best friend. It's about how it's remedied and we get through it. And first and foremost, that the service, the primary services of the safety and education of our children carries on. I think that's really, really important to say. And for me, um, the, the, the choice to move to a cloud-based solution was always a no-brainer, uh, even going back many, many years as a relative early adopter uh, back in 2012. Um, maybe it was just the high of the Olympics that I was positive about, but no, it, it, it worked It worked really well and we got set up and the training was in place to help us with that. Um, and throughout all of these processes, whether it's the older ones or even bang up to date now, um, that kind of dialogue, continual communication is absolutely key. And, and for me, that's been a major, major positive um, of Broncom to always have uh, those people on the other end of the phone. And, and as a company, they must be doing something right. Um, they, I've got a hell of a lot of quite long standing staff. Um, and I don't think that's necessarily always the case. It's lovely to be able to get rid of paying additional fees for uh, additional school support. So most SIM schools, I believe, probably go through a third party as a help desk. No need for that. There's always people either on an online chat or at the end of a phone. And that's really helped uh, throughout this period of time um, there. So, so myself personally, I went through a bit more of an exams background, got a bit bored with that, went into data organically and kind of never, never looked back since. Uh, you'd have to speak to my boss to let uh, to know how I'm getting on now at Direct though. I can't really answer that. One. Okay. So th this model of a, of a school community, I, th I think, is a really strong one. Um, as a lifelong uh, member of support staff, I've always struggled with the divide between maybe teachers and support staff. And then we've got parents and students and everyone are scattered all over. Why we can't just be a school community, um, I don't know. So that is my choice of phrase, I must admit. So kind of who are we then within this community? So. A really simple uh, little, little graphic, this one. Uh, we've kind of got our academies and the multi-academy trust working, um, hopefully in sync with our students and parents. And then there are other areas branching off that as well. But within these people and demographics of the community, um, what do they need to know? How are they used? How do we sync together? And how do we drive these efficiencies ultimately to allow first and foremost, teachers to teach for the betterment of the children's education. So from parents' perspective, quite set straightforward. We've got um, My Child at School uh, available via the website or the app. And that really allows us to draw a huge amount of data and information straight to the parents' fingertips. For the students, we've got the student portal, uh, or bromcomvle.com. 
Again, there's the app for that as well. Um, from the academy, um, we are driven through Broncom. And also there's the teacher app um, as well on mobile and tablet devices. Pulling in, again, uh, Derek really mentioned really well the API connections and things like that. But we were, have to work, it's critical that we work with powerful other organizations. Fisher Family Trust are a big one. Uh, we use WAND as an organization, but you've got group call and things like that as well as that API connector. And then we've got another icon there to signify Power BI, but that could have been Tableau or anything like that as well. And a slightly different icon there at the end, and this is a really important one for me as a job, and it allows us to open up and really control and manage all of our information, be it a student, staff, whatever we want. And that's really using SQL uh, Cloud Feeds to pull all of that data together. Now, anyone who works within schools or especially data management knows that bespoke queries come. Uh, we get some very odd requests at times, and we need to be able to get that compiled quickly and easily at our fingertips. Um, as well as this, it's not just these people, it's the unseen aspects, as I say, as well. What's happening behind the scenes? So for me, if I'm doing my job correctly and my team are doing their jobs correctly, we should pretty much be unseen. Uh, we should be providing the right tools to the right people at the right time for the information they want to see, be it parents, students, or staff. Okay, so if all that's said, and that's working well, that's going to help us to bring our school community together. So just focusing for a second on our parents and students. So with students, as I said, we've got the student portal um, uh, through the app or the website. Now, for those of you who have been around in education for a little while, you'll remember the big pushes for VLEs many years ago. It didn't go particularly well, and all of those kind of central DFE contracts, I think, have largely disappeared now. So it's what that has done in turn is make it slightly easier for us. We've got much better tools through something like Broncom, bringing it all together in one place. We're not even having to use an API to another solution, such as, such as show my homework, because um, that's already all there. We don't have to worry about outages and things outside of our control. So through that student community now, what we can do is engage with homework. That's obviously one of the biggest ones there. And I also have that really good communication and dialogue uh, between students and their teachers and vice versa. It's really important that dialogue and feedback I've had from schools who've used things like uh, show my homework in the past was they found that messaging and dialogue really, really useful, really, really powerful. So it's been important to be able to migrate that across uh, and carry on. Another one that's a slightly different one, and that is um, I quite like the idea of being able to empower our students with their own data. Why not share with them their attendance? Why not share with them their behavior? Now, as a school, you can control what you share and when and to what detail. All of those controls and functions are there for you. But in my experience, especially with one or two toe rags, um, sharing that information has helped to open their eyes to their behavior or their attendance. And actually, it saw an improvement overnight. So a completely free, simple marginal gain, if you will. And I think to be able to empower students, and it can be even primary as well, this, um, it, you know, you know your children at your schools, if your primary school students uh, can handle this or maybe do it with the parents or with them, show them, share with them, share and really let them uh, be empowered with their own data and information. Parents, carers and guardians. Um, I do feel sorry for parents at times in schools, I'm a parent myself. And sometimes we get hit with lots and lots of applications uh, to help manage our student data. Um, maybe it's a communication tool through the school. Maybe it's a payment tool uh, through the school. Maybe it's another tool to access reports and things like that. And all of a sudden, we're ha as a parent having to log in and out of lots of different applications to see fundamentally all of the information around our single child, or if we've got multiple children, obviously. What MCAS allows us to do is bring all of that into one place. Again, it's that idea of empowerment. Let's share with them dynamic 
information about attendance, behavior, online reporting, and let them save those. If they want to print them off and put them in a folder, that's absolutely fine. That's no problem. But actually, more and more parents are now wanting to be able to quickly browse through the history of their child. Have they improved since year seven to year 11? Rather than contacting the school, they can go on and get that information themselves. Clubs, trips and wraparound care, primarily primary schools, wraparound care, really good and really good useful. Put that on the parents to engage, sign up their children, then they've got all the details. Communication, absolutely fine. Instantly, we're able to send out those communications to parents and they can reply in turn basically for free. Uh, we've called text message credits throughout the organization and save a lot of money in doing that as well. And online payments from Compay, if you will, um, that can be used throughout an online shop uh, through MCash, you know, stationery, uniform, clubs, trips, wraparound care and different payment methods within one off fees, installments, uh, running balances, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So again, all those tools are there. And even coming back to homework briefly, we can share with parents the outline of the homeworks being communicated with our children. So there's no getting away with it for, for, for poor Jimmy at home. His mum and dad know exactly what homework's been set to him now. And actually, it's the parents' responsibility to help nag them and get that work done and in on time. Again, all of this is joining together students, the home life and the school to help engage and get the job done. Now, throughout the academies themselves and the maths, um, there's obviously, it's a bit a bit more complicated. There's more to it and a lot more flexibility. So training and support, um, I think this is quite quite a big one. Um, a really important area of this, and, and I, I know Derek mentioned this, but I'd just like to reinforce this. This, if I had to pick one area of significant improvement Doncom have made in recent years, it would absolutely be this one, uh, be it through staff like Sarah or Ross, everyone the trainers chad etc i'm not going to keep naming because it's not fair because i'll miss people out but um these improvements have been huge so as i said earlier no need to pay extra uh, for a help desk they can do it they have their first line support who are all powerful they they know the nuts and bolts of all the systems all the way up to quick reviews to second and third line for the slightly more taxing ones which people like me throw in there just to be a pain as i am um, the initial training and support is very flexible. So if you're looking to come across to Bromcom and migrate over, lots of different ways of doing that. Hopefully one day we'll all be allowed back on site with each other as complete normal. But in lieu of that, virtual training is obviously there and you can pick and choose the areas you want to have that with. Um, it's a really big step uh, migrating an MIS. For me, I, I am biased on this, but I think it's the single biggest migration software migration a school can go through and what i would say if any of you aren't from schools and you do want to have a little chat or a follow-up with it um you know myself and dret are more than happy uh, to, to have a chat with you uh, and there and that is all encompassing i'm able to do that because bromcom have given me the tools to be able to offer that additional impartial support as well um, the help desk, though, it's not just a phone line. We've got a nice online chat there as well, which works very, very well if you're too busy uh, to go through on the phone. So lots of different ways of doing it. And depending on the level of support, Bromcom are excellent now at triaging it up the ladder if it needs to, to come back to you. Um, working groups. So um Bromcom it's a relatively new area this I think for, for Bromcom or it certainly is for me uh, and Dan Sears who's who's lovely co-chair in this event um has been a really big driving factor I think in this and getting working groups together uh Derek from Harris has also helped to really set up more of an impartial um outside of Bromcom uh, working group of some of the some of the mats um and then Bromcom are now happily engaging with that as well it's kind of, again, it's that wider aspect of educational community that, that I mentioned at the start. So these working groups are great for networking, sharing ideas, but ultimately they're always there for the betterment of the software. And the better the software is, the more efficient it is, the more time we're able to dedicate to our children in the schools. So the working groups is, is a really important factor behind the scenes. And 
if you're existing um, uh, Broncom schools on this call at the minute and you're not involved with any of those, I would strongly recommend it. Uh, it's always good to use our voice uh, and, and help the betterment of the software. Um, and if you're not a Broncom school, it's, it's useful for you to know that they exist. Flexibility. Um, I think this is a really big one here. It's why I've kind of put it right in the middle of this slide, actually. And um, while Mark showed you the power of Vision X and that vision and Power BI there in there, what we need as a large organization is the flexibility um, to go kind of off reservation every now and then. And the F SQL and OData feeds, all cloud-based still, are brilliant for that. Absolutely brilliant. We can then pick and choose how we want to use the information, what whatever we want to use it for and when is up to us. And that flexibility is, is absolutely key. So personally, I'm not a Power BI expert, but I'm not bad with Power Queries and SQL, for example. So my method of choice would be to bring it through those avenues and through Excel. And I'll show you a couple of examples of that later. Financial savings. Um, it's a difficult one, this. Um, I think when I've spoke to other Matt's looking to join Broncom, a question they'll always ask is, kind of how much is it, how much am I going to save? And I'm saying, well, I, I can't really answer that because I see financial savings as more than just the pounds and pence of the software license. And if, if anyone wants to know a bit more about this one, not wasting your time, there, there is a case study, uh, which I did with Broncom not too long ago, which goes into a few more details about that. I know I know Ali, Ali has spread that over Twitter fairly recently. So thanks for sharing my Chevy Chase over, over the World Wide Web, Ali. I appreciate that. Um, but what I mean by that, the financial savings are all inclusive. It's software, it's hardware. If you go cloud-based, you don't need that hardware support on those servers on site anymore. We've got labor savings, we've got support savings, we've got the savings of not requiring all of our additional applications such as CISRA, Form Matrix, Show My Homework, Parent Pay, etc., cetera, et cetera. And then on top of that, there's the impact of human time savings and efficiencies which to be honest with you are completely immeasurable i wouldn't be able to measure that so when you are considering financial savings at your schools academies organizations um i think you may need to take a step back and think about it a little bit broader and a little bit bigger because uh, often a, a lot gets missed off there staff workload um a big one this ever since the the white paper a, a number of years ago um, that, that was produced um, and it, it is an important one actually it, this um, we can save on staff workload a hell of a lot if we're savvy with how we use the systems so the teacher app is there so um, if you've got a school trip for example they don't need to be doing everything on paper then it being sent back to a school then it being transcribed then being reported to parents if they just fill it out on the teacher app the school and the parents will get that all of that information dynamically live there and then um, so a really really useful one that staff workload we make efficiency savings all day every day be it through assessment attendance behavior they're obviously the big three in the data world in schools um, but we've got our dashboards uh, which we've seen a little bit about we've got third part sorry like tertiary dashboards not third party on sorry tertiary dashboards within the system, automatic scheduling of reports, which are hugely powerful, workflows, um, which are built in. And as Derek mentioned, actually, I was pleased when I said this, I think uh, behavior management is a bit of a party piece within Bromcom, very skilled, very detailed, and you can really then make the system work for you. Um, so I think that is important. And when I say staff workload and efficiency savings, I'm talking about the schools, map level everyone teachers support staff the works okay so assessment analysis and intervention then uh, kind of through the school communities so this is at school level at map level and again all of this information can then be useful and very easily used and shared with local authorities for lack reviews for example uh, SEN maybe it's evidence for an EHCP um, and equally sharing it with students and parents. So as an organization, we've moved all 22 of our primary schools uh, from this year through to Broncom's primary tracker. 
and it has been absolutely brilliant. I can't say that enough. What it's allowed us to do is create huge efficiency and standardization in how we analyze student performance um, and see that now come all the way up to the map view and map vision. All of that is automatic. There is no manual work for me and my team to do with regards to collating data and putting it together because it is all structured in the same vein. Um, so this there is traditional assessment still available. Obviously, we've just made this call. And what I've popped on the screen here is a little extract from Power BI, for example, in Map Vision, showing, showing attainment. Within the school, we've got an automatic analysis as well, good old fashioned Venn diagram, or in Bromcom's world, a subject triangulation. I just normally struggle to say that. Um, but all of those tools are quickly at our disposal. The other reason for primary tracker, which I've not evidenced there, was the ease at which teachers can enter their data. Very straightforward in a consistent single place all year. The next layer then, once all that information's in there and the teachers have obviously done all their hard work and that's been shared, that's created our automatic reports and we've sent our electronic reports to parents. So we're really engaging everyone. We've also then got our dashboards, huge improvements in this area in Broncom over the last 18 months. And these dashboards are now popping up regularly, more and more of them. And we can see that along the top, attendance behavior, got an example of a key stage four dashboard here, just a, a snapshot of it. It hasn't got all the information and all the possibilities there. And the smaller one in the bottom right is of our key stage two dashboard, very new that one. Uh, much more to come, I know, coming down the pipe, working with Steve Smith there, um, be it uh, comparing to national trends, your school, the same point last year, um, looking at bringing in more year groups involved in this. And most importantly, these are so simple to set up. Um, they are not complicated at all. This information then you can share with all of your school, no longer just creating lots and lots of spreadsheets if you want, just sharing it with certain individuals. I'm a big um, advocate of sharing as much of this information and knowledge with everyone rather than this knowledge is power route, which I'm, I'm not a big fan of. So using these performance dashboards to drive school improvement and intervention. As well as that, though, we've got our map vision, Power BI, which uh, Mark has gone through there and he's he's helped me out here really well but pulling in really good dynamic information across attendance, uh, demographics, uh, in, including maps, exclusions, COVID data, key stage two, four attainment, overviews, everything, everything really, really good. And that is growing and improving all the time. Again, I can't emphasize enough the improvement made over the last 18 months in this area. And it is a real privilege to be able to work with some of the product leads um, on this and see it grow. It, it, it really, really is. And as I say, we then have the flexibility to look at this through Map Vision. Power BI even now has an, um, an, an app built into Microsoft Teams if you're using Teams. So we can even begin to pull out these Power BI reports and share them in other environments. But, you know, all the, all the time knowing that's coming through your cloud-based MIS first and foremost. Okay, and, and I said earlier about flexibility, uh, really important flexibility for me, this one. Um, I'm a bit old fashioned. You have to remember I started working in schools and using Excel before we had any of this fancy ed tech. Um, so I'm a, bit, I'm a bit old fashioned with some of this. So where I want to be able to pull information out and reformat it into other ways, joining inf information together. So a big one for me is joining together the academic and pastoral lives of our children and getting that complete 365 narrative. So what I'm sharing here is a couple of dashboards, an example from a, a year 11 secondary school and another one from a primary school, showing that whole primary on a page, academic and pastoral together. These are really important. All of the data under this is through Broncom itself still. Uh, and just to kind of show you and evidence the types of things we can do, we can build up individual student profiles. We can see we've got behavior, exclusions, attendance, prior attainment, everything all pulling through. Now this I mentioned earlier, this is hugely useful for key worker reviews, for local authority lap reviews, things like that. Everything we do 
should be about making efficiencies and time saving, especially for, for teachers, SENCOs, key workers, all of that stuff and all of those areas so they can spend more of their time on the betterment of those children's education. Underneath there, um, I have no shame in this, I completely ripped off and rebuilt a CISRA uh, report. Uh, and this is a real deep dive into a uh, subject. Real, real deep dive. Now, is it available through the Key Stage 4 dashboard? I was just giving people another opportunity with really little to no extra work involved. So again, I'd like to create a couple of different ways for colleagues to view work. But really importantly, everything, as I say, that we do must come back to putting students at the heart of it. If it's not helping to improve their education, I don't think it should be done or at least not much time spent. And everything I've shown you there does have Broncom at the heart of it. And it's their functions, flexibility, efficiencies that allow us to work in this way. So, um, you know, Broncom itself enables us both as individuals in schools and a large organization. Um, so for example, DREP, over 14,000 students, 2,000 staff to come together for the betterment of our children's education. And what we've touched on here in this presentation is our students, parents, teachers, support staff and suppliers. So be that Broncom centrally at the heart of all of that, and then using one to build into other critical agencies such as Fisher Family Trust. Um, I just wanted to say thank you again to um, especially Ali uh, for inviting me to, to this talk today. It's really good. I really do appreciate um, the time that Broncom dedicate to, to me. I'm conscious how many meetings I have with all of your product leaders. Uh, it really is appreciated. And I think we are now really beginning to reap those um, you know, rewards that of all of that time and effort. Now, I think I've, I've kind of filled my quota there, so I will close down that presentation, but if anyone's got any questions, do please um, let me know. That's great. That was absolutely almost time to the second day. So well, well done. And I had no idea that your background was in uh, film and TV. So you, you were made for your moment in the uh, spot. <laughs> that was well. um, yeah, thanks ever so much for that. It's really interesting to hear um, the involvement of the whole community, not just sometimes, whilst it's really interesting to hear it from a data manager perspective, actually the impact on parents and students as well. Um, so thank you ever so much for that. Does anybody have any questions? I'll, I'll just double check the chat. And I, again, I don't think we do. Um, so either people are, are drinking their tea or you've answered absolutely everything that they've had. I'll just give it a few seconds again, because I know we've got the lag. I, I just like to chuck in as well. I think it's been really interesting from our first two speakers. So uh, especially from uh, David about that high kind of whole encompassing, um, you know, MISs aren't just for taking registers and holding pupil details, that they really are um, becoming that kind of uh, fundamental cog in a school or a trust that's feeding in and providing lots of centralised information. You know, you go back uh, years and years ago and it was just for registers and I think now you can really start to see the benefit and it's great having people such as David and Derek before him showing how that's impacted their trusts and sometimes it's hard because if you don't know it's there you don't know it can do it and actually hearing other people shows you the potential that the systems have and especially with Broncom I think that's that's really key and I know David and Derek happily happily support other trusts and uh, people um, to, to to get the best out of Broncom like I do. So it's, it's good to good to have them both here this morning.